starting? Okay, it is 534, and I'd like to call the September 7th uh, Capital Planning Committee meeting to order. And the first item of business is a nuts and bolts piece. Uh, I think all of you got the email knowing that uh, the town administrator was unable to make it tonight. Typically, that's who takes the minutes, so we need someone to volunteer to take minutes <laughs> for our right. meeting. You're, you're doing it? He is? That's no, I'm not. No, 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 no. Oh, 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 what a guy. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm finding. Still need to have written my minutes. I, my idea of minutes, minutes is uh, I write down the votes that are taken. Thank you. And uh, Carolyn is going to re uh, be able to watch it because we didn't think he was going to have this, so she'll, she'll um, do that. So I don't know that we're actually going to take votes, so I think the minutes are going to be yeah, you know, not, basically going through and that we've heard the discussion from. So At this meeting, I doubt we'll yeah. take any votes. I don't think so. We've got a lot on our plate. But, yep, I will. Oh. But we should still have something. Yep, yep. So I, I don't mind. I'll do, I'll, I'll do you that. You got it, Linda? I'll well, Linda, you got oh, a, yeah. a lot of heavy lifting to do, too. No, it's up good. to you. How about it's this? Fun. No, I'm fine. We, we promise to keep it super <laughs> short and sweet so there are very little minutes to take. I All right. All right. Except I don't have a blank piece of paper. Yeah, I will. I've got a problem. Oh, weird. Mm -hmm. I don't have okay. anything like that. I guess I'll write on the back of Drew's request. I got to do that. Do we have a motion to appoint Amy as the uh, yeah. motion? Motion. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'll take care of it, Linda. You got enough on your plate. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Amy, okay. congratulations. Okay, this is our... <laughs> Congratulations. 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 Check in with HR to finish your paperwork. Oh, oh by the way, you do have paperwork. I forgot, HR did send me something. You will have to do, everybody has to do a uh, conflict of interest. Oh, I've done that already. I'll try. This year? The course. Yeah, ma'am. You got to do you it every two years, years yep. Dick. Are you referring every to two the course? Years, you gotta no, do just, a, just a page you have to right. sign. It's, okay. a, it's something you have to sign. Fine. I'll send it to you in an email. I'm sure and David's already has his because of select board. But I'll send you in an email. And if you want to see me at the bank, I'll have you sign yours. But it's, a, it's just a form you have to sign. You have them at the bank? Yeah, I got them in my email, but I forgot to print them off. Oh, okay. I got them in an email. I'll see you at the bank. Yeah. Okay, we're here to have a uh, preliminary discussion on the fiscal 22 capital proposals. And I think at this point, I'd really like to turn it over to our town treasurer, Linda Sanderson, to uh, give us a brief synopsis of what we're looking at, the funding what is going on and so on and so forth. Well, the main uh, the main list that we're going to be working with is the one that has the yellow on it, at least uh, at least in the uh, electronic version. I don't know what your printers have. But um, what was notable, if you look back at other years, what's notable is that it is a shorter list and that people were, were hold, departments were holding back. And uh, that's good, and it's also, it's also concerning. You know that where where we're going next. I think this year is this year, and uh, if they could uh, if they could do without it or put it off, they did. We also have some of the departments that have ju are just coming off uh, getting uh, new buildings and some large items like that. So of course their capital requests will be down for a few years, and then we have some other departments that are um, uh, there's really just. Uh, they've been in transition. I don't think they've really made new plans like we sometimes see things with par from the park and rec, and we sometimes see, see things uh, with conservation, and, and those are both uh, departments that are in transition. Um, we always do put some kind of land preservation in there as a placeholder for them. But the ones that I did, um, that are highlighted in yellow are the ones that we have to discuss as a committee because they relate to um, how are we going to do the funding and um, the uh, various, uh, you know, is it, are we going to have, are you going to vote to have it come out free cash if possible, uh, borrow within the levy, or borrow subject to debt exclusion. Those are usually the, th those are the three options that we have. We used to have uh, capital stabilization, which still sits there. If we can get that funded one day, we'll use it, but at the time, at, at right now it only has about uh, just under $5,000 in it, so that's not really a pocket of money for us <laughs> at this time. So raise an appropriate would basically be out of free cash, and then the borrowing borrowing is, is, is what we're, we're looking at. The three departments, actually it's four departments, um, there were five. The schools dropped out theirs. They are aware that they've got um, a, uh, a nice school choice 
uh, fund to be to draw from. I think they had cool. something on for about fifty-four thousand, and acknowledged in the entire situation. They said we, they will back off uh, for this year, asking anything more from the town. So can, the question is: Are they doing it, or are they still going to go ahead and need those equipment, or are they just pushing it off a year? I. Uh, I, mean, I think they, yeah. I think uh, I think it's a combination. I think if they need it, I think they've got some left over from an earlier article. If they need it, they will. They were talking about uh, doing it from school, school choice, choice for this year. If yeah. Needed. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that that's what the way it is. It's not. Uh, it's not we can do without. Although that is a really good question because we do want to make sure you know, we get the word out at some point that please we we do need to hear what the needs are. Well, I just want to know yeah. if it's getting pushed off just another year. Right, right. Um, so uh, another department we can probably deal with uh, so it, with quickly is Hadley Media for the equipment. Uh, they asked for 15000 out of their own fund. They're, they have a reserve fund of over 200000 right now. I don't think that we really have, um, I'll, I'll leave it to you, but I told Drew I, I thought we probably could dispense with that easily and not have uh, him have to come in and and discuss what equipment he was getting. He also has um, some between five and ten thousand, I think, left over from an earlier article. But every couple of years, he's got in order to spend the capital that he has for the equipment that they need. It has to come before town meeting and be appropriated like this. So that brings us down to um, three primary departments: police and fire and DPW, which includes some items that are water, sewer, and highway. Um, in it and um, I do want to say I was just trying to I was trying to look and see what were pro priorities and just consider my within the levy not to be an opinion so much as a sample of what we're really kind of looking at if we can get our 350,000 over into that column up, made up of whichever items you think are most important between priority and timing and various other considerations um, then we will deal with the debt exclusion separately. Um, as I mentioned in my email, we have been talking and uh, I've talked with Carolyn about perhaps we just wait on debt exclusion until the spring. But I think before we, before we go to that level of recommendation, I think it's really important to hear from the departments as to what it is that they need and do they need it now. Can it wait, can it not wait? So I, I hear they all are and um, so let's Start off with the police department, Chief Mason. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, uh, I, as I promised, I will be quick. It is my wife's birthday, and I have to Happy get birthday. Home, <laughs> make dinner and have the candles lit before she gets home. So, um, I um, had a meeting with Linda and with Carolyn late last week um, because we have found ourselves in a position that the length of time that we're able to keep our cruisers usable, um, as well as the cost of what the cars are, has put us in a position to finally make leasing them cost effective. Um, I presented it to Linda, being that she's the treasurer and she's the only person that can approve leasing of cruisers. So this is not something, this, these are, this would be a lease to own, and it's not something that we would have to continue doing if we uh, once we start, we can lease a couple of cruisers to get us over this rough patch and then come back to capital at some point. But with the presenta presentation that I made and with the fact that we're only talking about somewhere in the area, depending upon how long of a lease the treasurer decides to go with, we're talking about something in the area of about $12,000. And we would not, we wouldn't hit the cost of one of these cars buying it outright until five years after we start the lease and by that time we would own that first car so i personally think that it's a good idea to continue on this track and completely remove the cruisers from capital and eventually put it into the operational budget because the first four years we're saving money hand over fist a lot we're getting brand new cars every single year um, so that would actually free up sixty five thousand dollars from capital right off the bat so with the conversation that I have from that I have with Linda and the town administrator, um, I'm going to remove that cruiser from this year, and at minimum, we'll lease one car, and then we'll reevaluate um, as we move through you know the years of this. Um, we'll pay that out of our operational budget if we have the money in there, 
if we have some money in grant lines, uh, or if we have to make a small adjustment at town meeting. Um, so it will not affect capital. So the only item that I'm left with at that point is the computers. Um, and the computers, they have about a five year rotational cycle. Um, that's usually what the IT people suggest. The last batch of computers that we purchased for our agency was purchased before I started as chief, which was a little more than six years ago. Um, so they are due for replacement. Within the email that I sent today, you should have the quote directly from Dell for the 10 computers that we require replacement for. That's not all the computers. We've actually bought a few here and there to lower the cost of that capital request as we went. And also because some were just so old and they were just garbage. Um, so that 20,300 right there is to replace only the ones that we absolutely have to replace. That's a 14723 for the quote from Dell, and then an estimated $5,500 from our IT people for all of the work that goes with it. Um, and that's it for police. The only thing that I would suggest or that I would say is that I'm willing to, as much as I, I don't think we can, the fire chief's presentation that he'll make in a, in a couple of minutes that communications equipment is number one top priority. I'm willing to forego anything that we have in our capital to make sure that we get that. Um, we're having a lot of trouble with our radios. Uh, people are not, officers are not able to communicate properly and effectively. And unfortunately, we're noticing it on some of the worst possible calls that you can notice it on. Um, so. I would throw all my, <clears throat> obviously we need the computers, but if we're in a position where you need to make cuts, I would say if you've got to cut that to make sure that we get the radios, we can go one more year. But we're, obviously we would have to look at what's going to happen next year because it's going to have to go back on that. But the cruisers, like I said, I'm going to remove that. Um, I know that will help. It will certainly reduce the amount of questions that we have at fall town meeting that we have every single time. Uh, and um, we can reevaluate and we can continue the lease program if, if we see um, you know, dividends and we're seeing good cost effectiveness and what we're getting for our money. Um, and uh, we can just stop if we decide and come back to capital if we decide that's the way to do it as well. But we have at minimum four years to be paying less uh, than, we, than what we would be paying here. And I think that will get us past this massive COVID deficit that we're looking at right now. That's it. So, Chief, regarding those leases, then, it sounds like uh, you'd need a supplement to your budget because the payment's now going to go into the operating budget, if I understand it correctly, and out of capital. So, yes, you're going to have savings for the first year, second, third, fourth, and you're going to have overlapping leases, right, and eventually. Correct me if I'm wrong, like in five years, it kind of levels out. In, once we hit the five, depending on which lease Linda chooses, there's a, a four-year plan, a five-year plan, and a six-year plan. Obviously, that fluctuates yeah. your monthly payments. Yeah. The five-year plan is, is the one that I was looking at just because five to six years is about how much life we got of the car. Uh, and at that point, we'll rotate that car into our detail fleet to make sure that we're not putting idle hours on these cars as they sit out here in 100-degree weather when, we're working, when they're working on Route 9. That also happens to be the time that we will own that car outright. So it just almost, it was almost strange how the timing lined up like that when looking at this lease program and the fact that the cost has increased so much buying hybrids um, with the new, the new model, the new style cruiser requires us to put a certain kind of computer in the car, which is more, which costs more, as well as the cruiser cameras, which increased the cost by about six grand now. So all of that factored together when we, when we reached out, Mitch reached out to two or three different companies and it was just odd how the numbers just seemed to line up appropriately. But yes, to answer your original question, we will probably require a small um, increase or adjustment to our budget uh, to cover that cost. Okay, and um, in five years, there's like a buyout clause, like you said, I'm assuming it's, I'm just, saying five years, assuming Linda goes through a five yep. year lease. But, and is that is there price? A I'm not sure if it, if it will work as a buyout clause, meaning you can pay what's left on the loan. I don't, I don't think there will actually be anything left on it. It's a lease to own 
set up, so we will actually just own the car outright after that period and of time. Typically, what do you see for remaining life after five years? Putting them on the detail line, we can get another two or three years out of those cars. And then what we'll do is we'll either junk them because they're just completely garbage, or we will sell them on municipal bid for a few thousand dollars or something like that. Um, we, we run them into the ground, okay. you know. But we just don't want them running into the ground when they're supposed to be getting to people's houses, you know, right. only when they're sitting out there on the side of the road. Is, right. is there a true lease program where you can, not a lease to own, but a lease program where at the end of five years you can just turn it and turn it over, stop payments and start payments on a new one so that way we're not having to deal with a worn out car? We can certainly research that. We, we, we looked at, we looked at two or three different companies and at that point we were just looking at numbers, straight up numbers. So we can certainly look into that option. And how many non-detailed dedicated cruisers do we have? Um, so I know these are all questions are going to come up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the hope is that no questions will come up at town meeting because right. hopefully it'll be gone. Right. But um, right now we have. Seven. Seven non seven patrol vehicles that we use for strictly for patrol. Right. And then we have some detailed cars and we have admin cruisers, which we use for either training or for um, administrative stuff. Just, yeah, seven cruisers times we'll say twelve thousand dollars a year seems like a way to keep up the fleet at a somewhat of a bargain than the way we're doing now with wearing them out and then having junk that we have to constantly be Repairing, but well, that's yeah, that you're exactly right. I mean, that's the thing, it's like the, the, the we've been able to actually decrease the um uh the maintenance line over the last couple of years because of the fact that the cruisers are really holding these these uh explorers, they're holding up so much better than the Crown Vix, it's it's crazy. <coughs> um, and we're getting better gas mileage with the new hybrid ones, so I, I decreased the fleet line or the uh the fuel line as well. Um, so in all reality, I just I feel like this is the right way right. to go to try to flip this fleet over from buying, you know, by the time you know two three by the time we get to the end of this life when we own this first car after five years, this sixty five thousand dollars for a car is going to be seventy, mm -hmm. the way that they're the way that everything's getting jacked up. So um, I don't know. It was just odd how the numbers made perfect sense the way that they went in there. So, but yeah. And, and, and unfortunately, Linda asked the exact same question the other day, but um, I had Mike Romano with me who handles the fleet, and, then, and as we look at it, we actually have three cars um, right now that are well over 100,000 miles. So we're a little behind, but we're survivable because of the fact that these cars are lasting a little bit longer. I'm just trying to make sure I understand. So if, if you're looking at twelve thousand dollars so you're saying it's about a thousand dollar payment is pretty much the lease payment right so for the for that's for one car so then next year we'll look at another car as a lease so that so this year so one year we'll be doing twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars next year we'll be having to put an operation budget twenty four thousand then mm -hmm. thirty six so all the way down, and you want, and, and the goal is to keep seven patrol cars. That's what kind of what you. No, want. no. The, what is the, your goal for the, how many well, patrols? The the re the reason that we're looking at it like this is because we we usually get five to six years out of a car. So okay. to go with what David said, when we get to the end of that time, this first car there'll be no more payments on it, and we will either get rid of it. I I like to get rid of it. Yeah. But I'm just wondering how many cars do you for do you I would keep them on a five on this five year cycle. So sixty thousand dollars. So if I have five years, sixty six. Six, if you do the number, I mean, I have like the literally the lease agreement right here. We did the math. Sixty six one ninety one. Sixty six one ninety one. Now give that. That's at the end of five years. We'll have five cars. Correct. And, and and every year we'll just have to. It will we be, keep turning them in, yep. and we keep having five cars, and brand will, new cars correct. every year. And, it, and, okay. and the, the reason, like I said, the numbers worked out is because you're talking about $1,000 more than mm -hmm. what we're paying right now yeah. for one car, and we won't hit that mark until five years from now, uh, and it won't go higher than that. Yeah. Right. So do they come with lights and all the equipment in it? Or is all that of the upfitting and the, 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 um, the installs and everything is all included in these prices. Sounds like a 
same period. Of time. It's it's just weird yeah. how it worked out like that. So I'm working for five years. Yeah. You know, you're saving, but then eventually yeah. it catches up. Well, right. Well, we we actually talked about that. That maybe it doesn't make any difference six years from now. It's the same amount of money, but there are a couple of things to consider. In the first few years, that's when we need it the most. Like yeah. right now. Yeah. And uh, until we pull out from COVID, that now is the critical time. Uh, we can even take that first year payment because we're two months into the year and we don't have it yet. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be that much this year. Mm -hmm. And he, if it takes two or three months to get your car, we're really only looking at paying half of that in this current <coughs> fiscal year. Yeah. So we may or may not, and this is something to discuss you know, with your boards as we're going into planning for the um, fall town meeting, we may or may not increase the budget by five, six, seven, depending on how much it is. Is it worth it doing it in the fall and and, uh, and and putting it out there, or we can increase it in the spring if we get to the point where we see does he re do they really need that extra money in the budget? It is one of the larger budgets. He might make it. He might not. Not so. That's that's just kind of a you can do it one way or the other. Depending on how long we can stretch it, like Linda was saying, because uh, because the car that we got at the last town meeting is still on order. That's how long it's taken to get these cars. Mm -hmm. in and upfitted and bat onto the street. I mean, they're literally, they're, they're so stretched out, it's crazy. And I have no idea why, because they don't have cops to drive them. Because nobody wants to be a cop anymore. Um, but it's taking this long to do it. So the longer that we can stretch this out, if we don't have to place the, if we can wait to place the order January, February, we're talking about half the amount of payments. And if I can stretch it that far, we might not have to add anything to the budget, depending upon Maybe. where I am with Mm. My lights. You got gas mm -hmm. savings, you said too. Yeah, hybrid. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can reevaluate at that point. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't want to wait until I would. If we miss, if we just cut this out of the capital and we ignore the cruiser completely at fall town meeting, we can always bring it up at uh, the, spring. the spring town meeting and make an adjustment. If I need two grand because I can't stretch it that far, we can do it at that point. Uh, but. You know, if I can get to January, February, I, can, I, I will have six months of evaluation there to know what I'm looking at for my line items and see if I can yeah. cover it inside. Yeah, so maybe we don't have to increase it, but you do want buy-in from Select Board and Finance Committee mm -hmm. before you get yeah. to the point of, oh, by the way, <laughs> we started a new way of right. buying our uh, vehicles. Right, um, but you, you, uh, she was, uh, Linda was also the one that mentioned that, you know, the first two or three years is, is where we're hurting right now. So maybe we don't. Maybe we reevaluate after two years or after three years, and mm. then we, we finish the payout for these ones, and then go back to the old way. I, yeah. it, it makes no difference to me. I just yeah. I thought that this made perfect sense considering the fact <coughs> that we're, we're in higher straits right now as far as capital mm -hmm. funding goes. Why not figure out a way to reduce spending, um, at least for the time in the short short term? Mm. So the other thing is on your. Um, Computers. I think there's a grant out there for IT. I, now I'm trying to remember where it was from. I shared it with you, Paul. Mm -hmm. Do you remember where it was from? The uh, grant. Yeah, Mass. I think I got it from DLR, Bill. DLR, right? Bill Dwyer. Department of Revenue. It's, maybe you know. Oh, no. he was. He did for something around. Mm. Um, well, there's some, and then it was all based on IT. But there's some grant out there, and okay. it's right. It's you apply for it now, I believe. So I could. Uh, if you if you have the email, I'm I'll happy see if to. I can pull it up while yeah. you guys are talking. Any other questions of anyone? Dick, or David. If you can send me that grant, I will be happy to look into it. We will write it and try to get it, um, and hopefully we'll have heard something by the time yeah. it comes time to make the decision. But in all reality, like I said, the radios that Mike's yeah. about to talk about are, are top priority. Okay, no other questions. We'll move on to the fire chief, Chief Spank Pebble. You're up. Thank you. <clears throat> so, this is a public safety request. So, this is police, fire, and dispatch. So, John. it's not just fire. We're just, um, <clears throat> I inherited the, uh, the project of trying to get caught up with radios, and it's a never ending battle. Um, mm -hmm. So, basically, they offer the same kind of stuff with leasing. But this is a much bigger dollar dollar value, which I don't I don't see how we could do it. So in discussions with uh, Carolyn, uh, the town administrator, we she suggested that I resubmit. So this has been submitted for two years. Uh, however, the scope has changed. 
So in meeting with our radio communications company, uh, they've put together, they did, they did, came out and did some heat maps for us. It basically shows us where we're deficient on radio coverage. Um, they, they went through our equipment again. And like I said, this has been a burden uh, because sometimes we don't get all the information from our contracted vendor. And vendors like this are hard to come by. Everybody is having the same issue with communications from Amherst to Northampton, everybody. Um, but we did come up with, I think, a reasonable, we all met together and went through what the priority is. Right now, the priority is the 199,654, which is for our consoles. So this is the base equipment in the station that is going to be end of life, December of 2021. Basically, Motorola no, no longer makes them. They no longer are making parts, so it's whatever's left, or you have to try and find aftermarket or used stuff. So this was determined to be the priority. Um, the second priority we're going to be discussing for maybe a different, maybe a leasing program or something else, uh, the second part is our antennas. So that's, we have the new station up north that has a new antenna on it, so that's taken care of. Um, the, only, the only difference is we're looking to try and make them into what's called a repeater site. So right now, our only repeater is at the center station. So basically, if we key a mic, it goes to that antenna and then it's transmitted out. What we want to do is we want to make all three of our sites, so the north station, the center station is already a repeater, and then we have an antenna at the Hampshire Mall. We want to make all of them repeater sites, that way we can do simulcast. That means if Mike's at a call at, at the mall, that, that, that antenna picks it up and it repeats it, rather than just receiving it and then having to try and get enough strength to, to hear it at our center station. So that's, that's phase two. The priority is these console portions. And um, I'm not putting in anything else. You guys, the capital planning has been great to fire. Our next big purchase is down the road with a ladder truck. But as of right now, this is, this is mission critical for, for us. Um, uh, again, we've been working, I've been working nonstop with Goose Town. There are the company that handles it. And uh, basically they said, this is, this is the deal of what we really need to do. Um, the total cost, which if, if we wanted to go down the road of a leasing, uh, the total cost of this project, but this includes replacing all of our portable radios, the radios in our vehicles, which we don't feel is needed at this time. Um, we're talking a little over $800,000 for this whole project. So what we're looking at right now is the 199 gets those, those consoles corrected, and then the, the second part will be uh, the antennas. So all told, it's gonna be about a $500,000 ask, holding back on the uh, other one. So, we are looking at uh, grant possibilities, um, but it's, that's a tough one for this radio equipment. It's just not the funding for it out there, but we are looking. Um, but again, end of life is coming up, and basically from the vendor to our ears, was they have one of these on the shelf that could be used as a spare at this point. The good news is the North Station is the new APX, so everything, that is a new system up there. Um, however, the Center Station is, it's, a, it's original to the building, so. How old is that building from 20? 1996. <coughs> and we did have one replacement of equipment. I was a senior in high school when that radio system went. So we did have one replacement on the, so when the station was struck by lightning, right. it didn't include re replacing that. It was all the equipment on the desk. So these, this is the, uh, this is the heart of the system, so. So if you don't replace the mobile, uh, radios or the car radios right now, will this console have the ability to do encrypted communications later down the line if that if you decide to go down that line if you know at some future point? This these this is all that P whatever compatible. However, we've been in discussions about that and uh, they actually won't do that type of technology on fire. Okay. Uh, they do we'll consider it on the police side, but we didn't feel we feel that if Looking at the heat maps, what they've come up with, if we change those antenna sites to these repeaters, um, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna see a substantial improvement. Plus, we also have the fiber project that the North Station is paying for, that is running that fiber line to the mall for that 
but will be a repeater. So we're going to increase the speed just upon putting that fiber line in there. Um, but again, the, the biggest part is the heart and soul, which is at the center station. That's, that's what we really, really, really need to look at right now. And Chief, just to clarify for myself, uh, you said the total was like 500000 which you're asking for just under two. Or what am I missing? Yeah, there? so the total project cost, if we were going to do both portions, so the consoles and the antennas, it's just over 500000 But all we're asking for right now, the priority, is okay. just the console. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll research with Linda the possibility of a... Um, maintenance lease program to get the rest of the stuff done and pay it out of possibly one or stretched across. I know Linda doesn't like doing it across different budgets, but potentially operational budgets. So basically like we did for fire alarm and sprinkler and generators. So basically our, this also impacts, you know, DPW in a sense, because our, we put together one maintenance contract with police, fire and DPW. Um, which helps lowers the cost, but again, I, I, I think that the second portion it might be something we might want to look at as a maintenance line in the budget um, that we could, you know, it, I think it would, you're, you're, we're cutting the project in half basically, so I don't think it's going to be quite as big of a cost. So all the work would be able to be done, you know, as soon as the budgets were approved basically, but we would simply pay it off as we went, which is really what we need. We need the project to be completed, so. Sorry, sorry to go back to the lease, but if, uh, if we went to the lease program, that would cover some of the radio upgrades because the car radios would be part of the upfit, correct? They would cover all, like all maintenance costs, which is another huge part about it. We would be able to have them out on site if something goes wrong over the course of, what, five, five years, which would be tremendous. But I'm saying we'd also avoid the cost, the capital cost of buying car radios for those new vehicles that we're Well, leased. we're actually not depends on, Yeah, it depends on how we... Which one we put in, I think we were talking about just leaving those off completely for the time being because our portables really are not bad. There's okay. really not a lot wrong with them. They're not Unless they find the something wrong with the mobiles inside the cars, I don't see any reason to spend the extra money right now. Okay. They were trying to put a complete package together because what it does, if, you, if we basically replace the entire radio system, including mobiles and portables, they give you this great deal of you know five years of warrantied service and you know, it's it's thirteen thousand four hundred sixty four dollars a month for five years <laughs> for this whole setup. So they were they're trying to give you this song and dance, which I I, I personally, in speaking with Evan, my deputy, who's into the radio side of it too, um, our portables and mobiles are not that that old. The problem is somewhere else. The problem is not with the like our cruiser radios really are not that bad. The, the portables are are not. They don't. They're not getting. We're not, some, there's a disconnect somewhere, and it's not the radio itself. There's no problem with the actual radio. It's, it's something else. Mm -hmm. uh, and they can't seem to tell us that there's anything wrong with the system except for the fact that it is completely obsolete. Yeah. The radios are not 24 years old, like the consoles are. The Correct. consoles are yeah. definitely old. <laughs> Those are the ones that we basically, they're supposedly, um, you know, they're a, they're a solid piece of equipment, but it's time. Right. Any other questions? I, Linda. I do. Um, right now, although you just mentioned the fiber objects project, the fiber optics project, right now there's a balance in the uh, the North Station. Correct. And I'm wondering how much of that, if, if some of that might be available for us to redirect into this, this this support of the antenna project. There's a couple of projects we still have, so we're still trying to get a hold of the lift. So we have, that's, that's out to bid right now. Um, so we're waiting on that number, so that's why I've requested an updated thing from, from Mary on what our total is. And then that fiber project, I believe, is about 198000 oh, oh, okay. So to finish that up, so we just wanted to make sure that the okay. last two parts that we have at that North Station are covered first, but absolutely, if that's... Okay, if the, yeah, if there was something, that we can do yeah. some redirect. We can do it from the others, too, but um, it just seemed to fit so nicely. Mm -hmm. Sure. No, if there's money left, that, absolutely. Yeah, if there we're was. talking about unexpended bond proceeds. Yes, yeah. and without having to go for another debt exclusion. Right. We've already Just borrowed the money and we've already repurposed it. it. Yeah. 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 That's why we took on the fiber project because it was gonna, it's gonna, hopefully, do a lot of other things for us down the road. Yeah. Good. 
Is Action, can Action Ambulance, can you communicate with them through the radio? They actually have our, uh, we programmed our frequencies into their, their radios. Mm -hmm. So yes, they're, they're on the same system. Fire department side has been working a bit better than the police side lately. We share, you know, we, were shaking, mm -hmm. we share these receivers and repeater. Um, so again, this is, it's an amended scope because originally the scope was to consider maybe putting an antenna on top of the of Skinner Mountain. But yeah. that was, you know, that was including building out of putting an antenna up there and historical stuff. And so in review, after sitting back at the table with Goose Town and saying, wait a minute, let's look at what's going on here first. And they completed these heat maps and showed what we might be able to come up with, you know, keeping it on Earth here rather than up in the, up in the sky. <laughs> so. Great. Okay. Any other questions, anyone? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Nice presentation. I will try to find that grant if you can't. Did you get the email? email? I didn't. And David, I'll check with um, Mitch tomorrow um, and see if we can look deeper into that whole the five year plan for that. What's your email? Yeah, I'll just see. No, I don't have it. He's got a birthday cake to eat. Come on now. <laughs> Look, I gotta go. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't get it. It's Mason M. Yeah, at HadleyMA. At Hadley .gov. Dot gov. Dot gov. Yeah, I did dot org. Yeah, or he's the tricky one. one. I will look at that tomorrow. Dot no. org. Yeah. I'll resend it. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. You want to right. take off? Enjoy the party. Yeah. Huh. Have some cake for us. I Sorry, hope you nice like to be at this point. Thank you all. Thanks. Bye bye. Take care, Chief. Okay, uh, we have the DPW up next. <laughs> Chris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I want to begin by also thanking the board for the two, a few minutes that you took to take a look at our equipment. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Good to see it firsthand. <laughs> so, Mr. Chairman, we have um, a lot. Um, if you, some of the things on my list, I would like to begin with the, with the, um, the roller that we just looked at outside. Um, this is. That's if you look at the, the list, the drone passport roller. Other oh, roller. Mm -hmm. The seventy-five thousand. Yes. Uh, the um, it's one of the major equipment for DPW. Uh, part of uh, the purpose of that roller is, uh, especially in recent past, we basically use it for. It's available for twenty-four, twelve months in a year, especially the spring, summer, and fall. Uh, we have road repair work to do, not only potholes, minor road repair work. Water main break, uh, culverts. Um, so, and then the purpose of the roller is uh, to, for us to have a good compaction, you need 98, at least 98.9 percent .9 compaction. And so, if you don't have a good roller, what you do is that you still have a lot of pockets of air, and it does impact uh, the work done. So you see that you do this asphalt or this compaction of soil or asphalt or whatever we do. And then because of this pocket of air, uh, within the next few months, it, it expands. And so it, it, it adds to the breaking up of the aggregates. And then, so that is why today, it, it's like having a backhoe. That's a major <coughs> part of our comp compacting. Uh, the the summary is, uh, is uh, if you look at the machine we just showed you, since 1997, there is no major weight of today's to be able to handle today's compaction. And uh, the cost of putting that machine on the road is very expensive. And even when we fix it, we cannot guarantee that it will keep its life, life for a particular project. We just had a major uh, covert repair on Mill Valley Road today. We couldn't use our compactor. We had to rent from a vendor. And um, we're still gonna need that vendor to bring his compaction to us tomorrow. 
and even for the next couple of weeks because we allow this this sort of settle. Uh, hopefully, motor vehicle traffic will also aid us. But what am I saying, Mr. Chairman? We we as a public works, we have a lot of townwide repairs to do. We are very grateful to this board and to the select board. We have we've gotten hot box meaning that we can fix road 12 months in a year, even in the cold winter months. <coughs> but we cannot, the, the other piece of that too is the compact or the roller. And so we are not, so <coughs> we, 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 we two, two cycles ago, we brought this 75,000. And then last year, because of COVID, it wasn't discussed. So we are coming back again to ask that the board look at this and it's a critical item for us. And <coughs> so that's where we are, Mr. Chairman, on that. Number two of my items is the 10 wheeler truck. Again, that's the one we just showed us. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a big horse for our job. It's a, it's a truck that the three divisions of DPW tend to use. So it's a 12 month truck. Uh, when we have a water main break, because of the size of that truck, <coughs> it, it, it carries twice the load of a regular dump truck. <coughs> also, when we have um, any major repair, the same thing. When we have the winter months, because of the size of that truck, <coughs> we put that truck on the main drive, main route. It's out there because of the time frame to cover a large area of, of our main routes, as opposed to frequent coming back to the garage. So, we, it's also a, a double, what we call, it has a regular plow and then a wing plow. So, it, so instead of putting two trucks on a road, <coughs> we have this one truck, it's able to take care of, yes. So, Is that it's- that 300,000? Yes. Okay. And it's a 19, it's a 2003, 2004 truck. Which was this, 2003? Uh, 2003, 2004. Yeah. Or 4? Yeah. 17 years old. Yes. And, and because I know we first put a lot of money in it, um, and we constantly, even today, we had the, uh, the repairs of uh, the collapsed cover on Millbury Road. Because of that truck, we were able to save some money from our vendor. We had to put our truck in to be able to um, use as a hauling truck to bring in and any materials and also to haul it. Otherwise, we would have rented another truck from the vendor. And also, it gives uh, us in the it gives us in us meaning DPW employees some some comfort because my staff all everybody was out there today working. As opposed to in the past where but we don't have this equipment, then 100% has to be contracted. And uh, it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. So I'm urging that the committee looks at us with some, I know it's a very big price, but the truck can last over 20 years, can last over 15 years, uh, and it does work with all the divisions of DPW. Now, if you're if we were to approve this what happens to the old one do you keep it in the fleet or trade it in or? we we will, we will try to see if we can get good money from it uh, because of today steel is very expensive today and so if we can get some good movies as part of the trading uh, so that uh, we don't have to put more money in it but uh, that call will be a final call will be made by the select board and the time setup. But I would recommend that we, if we have a good amount, if they give us a good number, we use it as part of trade. And could sometimes it's possible, especially the fact that uh, they can easily sell it out to third party because of the plow. Yes. Is that the only 10 wheeler we have? No, we have the other one, which is a single axle, which, which doesn't, it, it doesn't have much weight like the, this one. Yes. So we just have two big ones, right? Yes. Now. How old's the other one? The, the other one is said that it's uh, 19, 1997. I have. Uh, 
And so any trade-in value would be offset against the use of borrowing? Probably. Oh, um, what, what are you saying? You would trade it, you trade it in? It what would be a reduced price? Sold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so I wouldn't borrow. So I wouldn't we would borrow the actual oh, yes, sales yes, price. Yes. Because the, the, the sales, the vendor may decide to buy from us and they will give us a price. So we'll bring before the selling board and turn it. So I could sell it to another party. Or yeah, we can sell it on our own through municipal B to a third party. And it's possible that we would have to. That would be different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have to it'd be a little trickier. <coughs> Were you you mentioned three depart that all three departments yes. is would it be an even split because it wouldn't be three hundred it would be one hundred one hundred one hundred or is that not a fair split between the no, three departments? No, it would be a fair split. No. And uh, uh, highway uses more than water. Water Sorry. uses especially in the membranes. Uh, water membranes uh, when it does happen, it's always a big expen expenditure. So but it doesn't that happen frequently. But we as uh, highway we use more frequently because of road work and also because of snow. So what would be a fair, like 150, 75, 75? So, so I, I, will, I, will, I will recommend that we give uh, the general government 150, 170. Oh, yeah, when you're talking a three-way yeah. split, you're talking sewer? Yes, yeah, sewer. Sewer, water, and sewer highway. Sewer is a yeah, pro it, the sewer probably wouldn't yes. use it yes. probably at all. Oh, okay. So, so it would be, it'd be more 200, 100. 200, probably. 100? Yes. What, 200, 100, zero? 200 would be the government, the highway. Yeah. Okay, every 100 helps. Yeah, sure enough. Yeah. Also, Mr. Chairman, I just want to add this to you too, uh, because these numbers, we got these numbers before the pandemics. So if the board is looking at this number for us, uh, we hope that they will get a better price less than this number. Yeah. And that includes the plow? And the Yes. It's yes. This is complete. There are no other surprises or no, additional the equipment. The only thing that we did we, we didn't include is insurance. Mm -hmm. yes. That that three hundred mark might be on the conservative side yes. because of today's uh, market. Because yeah. just the way everything's going, right? It might right. be. But I mean, if we're trading and the other truck are selling it, there's going to be some wiggle room there anyhow. So. Usually something like that we try to hold on to as long as we can, but the nickel and dime effect really happens to us a lot where we try to keep that vehicle and okay, yeah, now the springs are shot at us. We have to throw ten thousand dollars at right. that. Right. And then, you know, this the transmission acts up and we have to throw another ten thousand at that. It really starts right. you know, our vehicle maintenance budget goes pretty fast with uh Yes. For the maintenance costs are equaling the debt service payments. Right. And say, well, why not? Yeah. yeah. But any other vehicle we probably keep and run it as long as we can, but that one's pretty costly to repair. Any other? What did you put in the repairs last year for it? I could I could get you the dollar amounts, but there was some pretty significant repairs to that vehicle. Yes. And the year before that was even I believe more. And uh, we are now in the process of uh, prep, uh, winter prep, and so that vehicle too will do some. And, and parts are starting to become a problem. Yes. As the chief said, everything just seems to get dated in. They just don't make parts anymore. Yeah. A lot of the sander stuff that failed last winter, we had to fab in house or have a machine shop make some parts for us. David, Dick, any questions? No. I just I'd like to see uh, kind of like what police are, are, are doing as far as rotating out vehicles happening on a regular schedule, better schedule because um, I know in the past, especially DPW and, and fire, has relied on surplus vehicles a lot, which cheap up front. But well, I mean, you look at the loader down there, and all of a sudden they're they're dumping all kinds of money into hydraulics and and on and on and on. Uh, but we just have to kind of get on a staggered schedule here so we're not having to buy all this stuff at once. Mm -hmm. um, and then we know what's coming to the down right. the road. And to explain to the to the townspeople that, you know, we're not just trying to buy all new vehicles so we have nice shiny new vehicles. It's it's a it's a process here. You know, right. we're, and we're not right. trying to rely so much on 
how old is that loader and that other stuff over there in the, the green dump truck? Our, our surplus dump truck, uh, we just got it back last week from a, from a $5,000 transmission repair. So. Is that a big, that's a big dump truck you're talking yeah, it's about? Yeah, it's a big one. It's not quite as heavy duty as that. It's a, is that no, the 1997 one you're talking? Uh, no, no. no. It's not, it's not, it's not, that's the yeah. surplus. That's, a, that's, a, that's, yeah, that's, that's a, a, that's a, it's a 1985. How many big dump trucks do you have? Uh, the two, the two big ones we have, and the rest of them are single axles. Those are the smaller ones. That yeah, but that, that, the one, the 1985 doesn't have a plow or anything. It's a strict dump truck, and it's a military surplus. I think yeah, we got that from from the military surplus. That's the camouflage. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah, I kind of saw that around and I was wondering. Oh, I do No, I saw that. And I'm like, okay. I'm very grateful to have that truck because it has helped us immensely, especially in New York work. And yes. Also, the chairman, we have the third one on my list is we have two, one. Ton trucks, that is small ones. Two of them are already, uh, one of them we've put in a new um, body a couple of times. We've done a lot of uh, repairs. They are 2001 and uh, one is uh, 1997, one is 2001. Uh, and, and so, but speaking with the, speaking with the, the town administrator, she, she of the view, I think when I was in that meeting, if we can get one of that uh, dump truck and then revisit it, the next one in the next uh, cycle. So, but because of the nature of our job and the fact that uh, we need those trucks, even as small as they are for snow plan, for uh, road, road work, uh, it's also very uh, dear to us. We spend a lot of money on them, and uh, Scott can talk about it. I need to so is yeah, right so now. They're not under normal circumstances. They're not, it's a big, it's a big expenditure. What we do? So the the one Chris, well the first one Chris is talking about, it's a 1997 yes. Ford yes. Uh, pickup truck. Uh, it's starting to show its age. It's got a lot of rot in it. I don't even know if it'll pass for a sticker. Well, time will tell on that. Uh, the transmission is failing and it just, it's really time for years replacement. Old. Yeah. Uh, the it, it, stores it, to what David's saying yeah, about but, rotating right. stuff. The truck, the truck is really served hardly well. It, it was, that truck goes back to Mr. Kowalski. So it's, and it's, it's really served the town well. Uh, the second truck Chris is talking about, it, it's a little complex, but not too bad. Uh, the vehicle that I normally drive, the one that's out there, we were looking to replace that with a heavier chassis truck and move that particular truck to the water department. Uh, they need, there's four employees over there now, and there's two trucks and a dump truck that's coming, but the dump truck isn't really an everyday driver. Uh, so when we read water meters and things of that nature, uh, we're kind of shuffling things around because we have to put a computer into the truck and antennas and stuff to go out and read the water meters. And we just kind of want to be able to have that equipment in the truck. Uh, even when people call in for uh, final reads, of things of that nature, we can just go with that truck. It'll be constantly set up to do that stuff. And uh, smaller things like we sample water twice a month where we don't need to drive around in a, a one ton pickup truck. The half ton truck will be sufficient. It's got the extended cab to put things inside where it's in out of the elements. And it would just be very useful. There's a lot of things that we do where we could use a little smaller truck, better on fuel, and, and just maintenance costs are a lot less on that truck than 
the heavy duty pickups. Mm -hmm. And the, that's one you have on order? No, the, the dump truck is what we have on order. It's an F550 dump truck with a plow. And that was ordered back in February. Okay, is that for the water department? Yes. yes. Okay. It's a replace, uh, really? that one is replacing a 2001 truck. Okay. Great. Uh, Chris, would you want to go over, you know, briefly go over the rest of your yes. request? Yes, yes. Thank you. Just yes. go right So down. we, we, so I would like to go to, before I go to water, I would like to go to the last general government to read the, the, the ditch maintenance. Uh, we are requesting funds for the ditch. Mr. Chairman, if you recall, uh, about a year ago, the, the select board approved and the town uh, went along, we were able to get some funding to take care of uh, the town-wide ditch maintenance. Mm -hmm. And that has helped us a lot, especially in this, uh, with this excess of rain and, and flood. And we want to keep that maintenance going. And so we don't want to go back to where it was it took 20 years or more before we got to it again. And so we, um, we are asking for $50,000 so that you give us an annual money to go through the town again. This time is cheaper than the last time we, because we, we have been able to fix some stuff. We still have some minor coverts. We still have some areas where that um, might require uh, constant uh, cleanup uh, because of clogs and other stuff. And then we may also buy some materials, uh, either riprap or some stones. And sometimes we may rent a bigger machine than ours, depending on the location. So that's what we look for that money for. So that this way, the, the job we've started will, will continue that annual cycle. I know we're not voting tonight, but the fifty thousand I think might be a little bit of a hard sell after the last. Well, actually, that's what I was wondering too, because we, it was a hundred before, and we still have fifteen left, and that was oh, that was two years ago. So right. two and a half years, and we still have fifteen thousand left. Yeah, so yeah, the reason is that that fifteen is going to be out. We're going to use that fifteen in the next few weeks, and the in the era of COVID nineteen. We weren't able to do much because of uh, the shutdown. Yeah. That's why it's the other 15. Yeah. I'm just wondering, though, yeah. though oh, I'm not faulting why it wasn't spent. I'm just wondering, going forward, if a total of 30, 40,000 is enough, maybe that could be reduced, especially if we're talking about it being within the levy, bringing it down to 20. Yeah, that, that would be fine. I would appreciate that. If the time can give us something. Uh, it would be, be good so for us keep because... keep it rolling. You'd have 35000 and it's yes. possible we deal with it in the spring. I was even thinking like 10000 because, uh, you know, there's not going to be a whole lot done over the winter as far as... Yeah, or we want to be ready for spring. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how the routine... Yeah. I don't know how it goes. Yeah, but um, I, I just know that there was a lot of pushback as far as kind of a... a, a in just what was seen as a piecemeal approach with fix this section, skip the culvert, fix this section. And so to explain that to the, the townspeople is going to be tough, you know? And so I just, I know it's hard to plan in advance of how you're going to use the money exactly because stuff comes up. But, um, you know, 50,000 on top of the 100,000 is, is, is I, I wonder if that's something to build into um, the budget. Well, I kept, it sounded like to me that some of the words that you used was um, to continue this project as maintenance and down the road. And so to me, I would think that we might need to put take this out of capital because that's a one-time project, yeah. right? And, and if this is an ongoing thing that you need to keep up every single year and fund every single year, yes. then we're going to probably need to put that into the regular Operation. main budget, operational budget, and not yeah. into capital. Yeah, yeah Mr. Chairman, the reason why it has to be every year is because it's our main drainage system. But uh, I agree with the Chair, um, we don't have to get 2000 Just, but And then also, it might be a good idea to, as you said, put it in our oper operation budget. We'll be glad to do that. But it might, might be less in the budget, but at least it would be always something that something, is there. Yes. And that would 
I'm trying to remember from town meeting when it was approved. I thought the way that we pitched it to the townspeople was that, you know, we haven't done this in 20 years. Right. Here's yes. a one-time thing to get caught up, and after that, we're going to kind of stay on top of it. So yeah, I, you kind of said it was a down payment. Yes, right. But not an ongoing thing. Just a hey, this is a this is to get us on the right track, and then we'll start taking care of it as we go. More that I yeah. see more as maintenance. But in a way, it is an ongoing thing, right? Right. Yes. Chris. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah, so the, you're right, I mean, to, to include it, if it's going to be recurring each year. Well, kind of like the trees. Uh, yes. It is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I agree, Mr. Chairman, if, if this, we can put it in, in our prison budget, but not 50000 Yeah. So, no. Potentially pull it. Well, I, I don't know. I would, I would do a holder for now. We don't do the 10, 15, 20, yeah. and, and, uh, because increases in the budget, just like we were talking about with police, we're going to have to uh, you know, revet that with, yeah. with both of your full committees come and see how they go. That. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're moving it from one shell to another. Right. So, Mr. So, Chairman, also, I have a couple of other things that I'm, I'm going to rush quickly. One has to do with town-wide issue. Is a um, gas pump. Yeah. Uh, we have the 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 pump station at D, uh, DPW services all the town vehicles and departments, and um, it's also on twenty four seven. Now, it's been because of age and um, the type of pump we have, we've had we've had to spend some money in recent past. So keep it going. And recently, we about a year or two ago, we also had a major issue. Uh, we could not get gas. The police could not get diesel. Or we could not get diesel. Police could not get gas. We had to go to uh, Pride as Plan B to get an account um, so that the police could function and us could function, especially in the uh, hot summer season. Uh, so moisture and uh, so recently we've had the experts take a look at it and also because of the age of one of the tanks uh, the repairs is becoming too expensive and so they are suggesting that we look at uh, what we call uh, above ground storage mm -hmm. as opposed to the underground and also because of the underground storage uh, we also have to make a report to the EPA the inspection is more stringent than above. And so, Scott has been handling that project. Scott, you want to talk more about that? Yeah, uh, as Chris was saying, the biggest problem with it is the gas side of it, uh, especially when you get any kind of heat, uh, the gasoline vaporizes in it, and we can't pump the gas because it's, it's, it's all fumes in there, it's not liquid when it, when it starts getting down. So about like the, their 10,000 gallon tanks, and we start getting to the 4,000 gallon mark, we can't really pump any gasoline anymore because it, 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 it gases off. Kind of? What's that? Like a vapor lock? Yeah, yes, it, exactly. It gets vapor locked in. And we're told now with the fuel, the fuels with all the additives in it, it's more volatile than it, what, it, what it used to be. So it actually gases off a lot easier. Uh, so we had a, the vendor come look at it. There is an option of putting a submersible pump in there because right right now our pumps are suction. It sucks the liquid out. It doesn't get pushed out. That, uh, so putting in a suction pump in it, it's an option, but it's not a very good one because the their their vendors feeling that the gas tank itself is starting to meet its life expectancy of around the thirty year mark. And you could, we could do a project with that and have the gas tank fail kind of immediately, you know, you, you never know. Mm -hmm. And we could, that money would be all thrown out. And they're suggesting that you know, we think about going above ground. And there's uh, the, wire, the wires that are around it and anoids that uh, for the protection has failed and it was repaired and we don't know how long that'll last again either because it's got protection so 
the soil or whatever attacks the wires and not the tank itself because they are they all they are double walled steel tanks in the ground. And so this amount of four hundred and some odd thousand that yes. includes the that's for the above ground. Yes. Does that include the removal of the tanks? Too? It, re, it it includes the removal of the tank if they don't find any contaminated soil. That's a whole other yeah, thing so you don't know until you get into it and see if those tanks have leaked. Is it 30 years old? Yeah, there yeah, is. Roughly getting to that. Yeah, yeah, roughly around 30 years old. We've been trying to find paperwork on it, but there's really okay, nothing in our department. So that could be a costly venture, too. Yeah. Yes. If there's contamination, yes. yes. Are the diesel pumps okay? Yes, the yes. diesel pump is okay because it it doesn't really gas off because it's oh, yeah. you know it's yes. diesel. Yes. Um, but to do the project, it's kind of you do both, or because it's kind of all tied together. Right. So, any idea what we save buying fuel in bulk, um, you know, per gallon, roughly? Any idea versus uh, market price? The gasoline I just looked, I think it was around, don't hold me to this, around two dollars and fifty cents a gallon when we bid it. Okay. Uh, Versus three dollars. Yeah. Sort of. But there is a state like credit card, and yeah. Carolyn was looking into it, and I'm not sure where she is with that, and Jennifer, so to buy fuel on, on their contract with the credit cards. Yeah, and that, that was my thought. So if we're going to spend $450,000 on gas pumps, we'll just say, you know, for, for the unleaded gasoline, and we're saving 50 cents a gallon, uh, we'd have to 900,000 900, gallons of gas, which I'm sure probably would take 30 years to, to, <laughs> to realize the cost savings. Yeah. Probably more than that, probably more than 30 years. Um, it, it just seems like you know, like a fleet card or it, like the troopers have, where yes. they, they, sure. can, they exactly. can go to their yard or they can go to Cumberland's or and Prize or wherever and us not have that cap continuing capital cost of maintenance, DEP reporting, yes. all that kind of stuff. And also having potential cleanups too. And also having what, a 10,000 oh, 10, 10, gallon tank times $3 a gallon diesel tied up sitting on the ground for a year at a time, you know, to free up, free up money for the town as well. So I just, yeah, it, so uh, it, we, might, we might have to follow up with the town and to see where she is and yeah. that. Because if, if there is, a, as the chair said, that's a good opportunity for us. And also for the police, especially. Yeah. So, and those of us. The, the, only, the only thing we have in our own pump yeah. is uh, under emergency. Right. That's powered by generator, where we can always kind of pump fuel where if there's a massive power outage, you know, all the stations are out, we can't get gas or diesel fuel. That's the only, yeah. thing. diesel fuel's a lot easier. We, uh, you can get a, we could get a, consumers. You know, a truck to come and fuel on site. Right. Gasoline's a little tougher, mm -hmm. but I mean, the police vehicles are a big user of gas or, right. but I mean, Realistically, I guess, how often does power go out now for, I mean, not, I guess, <laughs> not that wood, but yeah. you, you never know. Yeah. Ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> the October storm. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing yeah. where... Hurricane is uh, hopefully, yeah. you know, you're right now. Yeah, the October storm. Stuff was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ten years ago. Yeah. We could we could pump gas where no one else could. That's, right. that's the only benefit mm -hmm. to the project, and it's... I agree with David, it's pretty costly. I just wonder if... Uh, and it's right there, it's at the yard. Right. It's a convenience factor too. Mm -hmm. But I just wonder if, for the emergency purposes, you know, like, like the troopers, they can go to Northampton to get gas, yeah. Hadley to get gas. Yeah, I was wondering about other gas. towns. Yeah. Right. Can we, can we contract with Amherst? And they, get, they would have the low rate and then we would buy and yeah. give them, I guess, a, you know, yeah. a little bit of a profit. Or, or just reimburse just them. Reimburse them. Yeah. Well, just the card that you use. Wear and tear. If power's out in Hadley, let's say Hadley, Amherst, Northampton, if they have to drive to Sunderland to, to get to get gas or South Hadley in an emergency, that once every 15, 20 years that happens, it might be worthwhile to have that flexibility. Mm -hmm. I would save the half a million dollars. 
I was also wondering because we're doing the feasibility on a, a, a um, you know, whether it's uh, moves along this year or five years or ten years from now, we're going to have a new building. Is are, are the pumps going to be in the wrong place? <laughs> well, for 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 the next plan. Um, that's part of the discussion. We were planning on moving them way over to another location on the property because mm -hmm. the whip. They, at a quick glance, they're not in the right spot for any kind of addition or anything to the building. If we went to a fleet card, purchase card, however you wanted to, whatever you wanted to call it, uh, and we were to just decommission the unleaded pump mm -hmm. for now, drain, drain the tank. Could it be left in the ground until such time that we had to do something with the diesel tank so we could yes. use the diesel tank as it's running? I'm, I'm not exactly sure right now. It, it could, especially if they would do some boring and find that the around the tanks is not contaminated. I'm just wondering if we could, you know, with COVID and everything else, not have to, I hate to kick the can down the road like we like to do in Hadley, but maybe save it until we really need to address the diesel pump with the new facility or moving the pumps or whatever else down the line and just uh, you know, do the card or, or some other agreement in the meantime, just to get us through. I think, I think to be honest with you, if, if you're gonna go with cards, we just- Do all of it. Just de decommission both. Okay. Because there's still a risk factor of a week or <laughs> et cetera. I mean, if we're gonna go to a service station it really probably be in our best interest to just uh, Let get away from the risk. <laughs> yeah. yeah, or and, and if bare minimum, if we had to remove the tanks, that wouldn't be, unless we found contaminated soil, which... Does it check out something else? Yeah, it, that would, whether you did it today or five years from now, it's still gonna be a problem. Right. Well, so, does DEP require you to remove tanks if they're no longer in use? They have to either be removed or filled. Yeah, something has or to be Or filled. Yeah, filled with concrete, and that's the, that's a lot of concrete. Those are, that's a 10,000 gallon tank. It'd be yeah, a lot easier to take it out. It does like people take them out, so yeah. We Especially if there's, if there's no contamination, then it'd be pretty easy. Yeah, it would be. Or cost effective, yeah. I should say. Do we, do we know what that cost would be? Because we it already have 30,000 into the gas pumps with an earlier vote. That was part, the removal was part of this coal I'd have to see, and yeah. then we could, that was through this specific vendor too, just to remove the tanks, we could, you know, go out to bid on it, because it's a lot different scope of work. Because that might be easier to cover 50,000 for a tank removal process now than right. 450. And like you said too, Dave, we got a lot of inventory tied up in there too, you know, 10, 20,000 gallons and 10. Yeah. And, and like like I Ten said, piece times three dollars. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets hot out, we own three thousand gallons or thirty five hundred whatever. Oh, yeah. That it's basically of no use because we can't get it out of the ground anyway. So it's just there. Yeah, we can't be right. Yeah. Yes. Right. So when the weather starts getting cooler here, will we be able to suck out the rest of that and use what's would do pretty much down to empty? Do you think or is that yeah? We should be able to get it pretty should, close yeah. down, but. I, I'd have to ask Chris and look into it too because we what we bought fuel on the Franklin County bid. Okay. How's all that work out? Do we have to pay a surcharge if we don't use the fuel? I'm oh, not sure yeah. how that all that, or not. Yeah, I'm not sure what the fine print is on the contract. I'd have to you know, Chris look into it or whatever, but it it's probably not that much anyways, I wouldn't see right. that, you know. It seems like there's a lot of questions that have to get answered. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, I guess it depends what road the fun. town wants to go yes. down. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe Whether we could get more information. Or... We got three weeks until our next meeting and possibly come back on that one issue yeah. to discuss it. So we'll there's like a lot of things that. to consider. And that $450,000 mark, uh, I don't, you guys watch the market and stuff the price of steel goes up every day and they they will own when they quote the job 
you have 24 hours to sign the contract. <laughs> and if not, they won't guarantee that price. That's how much the yeah. steel price changes yes. daily. You're talking about what's needed for the, the canopy for the pumps and all yeah, that. Yeah, the whole stuff. thing. That's what the guy told us. He's like, literally, the steel mm. price changes overnight. So if they tell you, you know, today it's 450, tomorrow it might be 455 or whatever. Mm -hmm. it's, it changes that fast. Okay. How about the other projects? Yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, we have uh, two more to go. One is water division. We have the hydrant and valve replacement. Is a, we have most, some of our hydrants and valves are aged. And so we are required to upgrade them basically and because of safety and also because of uh, our water. So we have, we are paid for 60,000 to purchase and uh, install. Some of the installation we do in-house, but most of them we, because of other obligations, we tend to. So we go a section by section of town and uh, sometimes is we look at, especially the Hydrants we have are the dead ends, dead ends. Um, so that will bring them up to current standards. Yes. Yeah. And you do the work yourself, you said? Yeah, as, as, most of them, some of them, yes. So this is all equipment here that yes. we're looking, or hardware, I should say. Yes. Yeah. And that's out of enterprise, but it's still borrowing, yes. Linda, you're saying in your email to us? Yes. Yes. Um, Probably. I mean, it could. There is enough there that we could pay that out, right? There is enough in water reserves, but we, um, but as opposed to, wait a minute, uh, yeah, as opposed to sewer reserves. So it is possible that we could pay that out, right? Um, Either maybe way. Maybe I'll talk with Finance Committee about whether we spend it, because we had about close to one and a half million dollars in the water reserves as of last fall. So you, there, the money is there, you could just do it out, right? Um, Either. No, not the sewer one. I wouldn't do that. Though. Borrow this or borrow the Route 9, right, for the cost of the uh, line. Yeah, the line replacement there. So. Oh yeah, that's you're right, right. You're right. So I mean, you know, I haven't made that adjustment. Okay. Yeah, you're right. That's the one. Uh, yeah, the that one we just we just had the last meeting. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. I remember how much? Oh, yeah. yeah. I forget how much it was. Off. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. E either way. Yeah. Um, but, um, and how about yeah. the sewer then? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, the sewer issue is uh, also a maintenance issue. We, uh, we, we, uh, we have sewer mains, and many of them, uh, because of years on the ground, uh, either due to, due to vibration, or due to uh, root interference, or due to some any interference, there are cracks, and uh, by nature of uh, DEP requires that uh, we minimize cracks, we call it I and I, infiltration of water and rotten. And also to, because of where the mains are, some of them are on, right probably under the building. And so we want to put what we call sleeve, we want to put uh, some line in, in, inside to, you know, so it's basically putting another pipe in a bigger pipe. Mm -hmm. uh, so to and that is needed to keep the the main alive and also minimize uh, uh, infiltration and nutrition. So that is what this price is for. Uh, every year we do we camera the pipes because we also have to report that to DEP. We camera the pipes. We find we have, we have um, issues. Uh, so and most of it are uh, main go th they go through not uh, not main they go through route nine they go through middle street and they are all in a major and we're not going to be able to dig them because some of them are very deep so we use this technology to basically and that is the cost we have right now is for the area we have camera for the past two years we've been able to do some camera. And uh, so that's what we are requesting this month. And the reduced diameter doesn't affect the flow or anything of that? Because yeah. obviously it's got to be a smaller it's, pipe. It's a, it's a very, the the, uh, the lining is very thin. Very thin. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so all the way around. 
Well, that's all. Yeah. 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 And how much does that buy you know, in terms of years? Oh, a long, long time. It's Huge. a really. Uh, it, it, it's like it's like poly almost. It, it's really really hard. They, the way that they put it in and stuff. Uh, we have a sample at our yard. If you ever wanted to see it, uh, it's just it, it, it's really just the coating is solid when it's done. It, it, it it's like it kills yeah. itself with time. Yeah. Yes. It just it's it's incredible it's, technology. I think John was saying fifty years or something. Like that, <coughs> yeah, the yeah. additional life. Right? Yeah, well, as long as nothing else happens. Right. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. catastrophic. Yeah. Right. Yes, that's yeah. incredible. The, the the spots where we find the most wear in the pipe is where the pump stations where you have pressure sore and it goes to the gravity line in the first few hundred feet where it still has some head on it from being pumped until it slows down is where we find the most wear mm -hmm. in the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. What else do we have here? That, that's all we have is Jim. We I know we have. Um, I see chapter ninety on here, yeah. Linda. That's just yeah. That's uh, yes. that's just another funding source. Um, the the culvert. And map the catch basins. Okay. And, and eight, uh, the second right below chapter ninety, located map. Uh, that looks like oh that's part of the NMS the ongoing that's, NMS four project okay. that's already that's covered. it that's a different thing yeah yes what's the North Hadley culvert balance yeah that's uh, uh, a forty seven we have some so MS four that's a grant I take it no no we borrowed money uh, at one point I think we authorized three hundred and something thousand dollars yes. and we've been borrowing it in pieces because it's over uh, ten years it's over. At least by it's a number of years where we just keep moving along phases. I think it was 370 to start yes. with. So the trailers are coming out of ARPA. I see. Is that culvert? Is that by the curb in North Hadley, or is that by by Linda's house? Mark? That's across by from Linda, us. By it's house. the on the main road. Yes. Okay. Where we, the, we, uh, we have this same money from Antarctica. <laughs> We're trying to fix the bridge. See if yeah. we can use it to do some minor repairs. It'll take me a while to get to work. They still gave <laughs> us uh, yeah. a long way around. They still gave us uh, inspection. Gary. And Go then, on the dirt road. Uh, and then, uh, I can't. Two or three weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Shadow. The gentleman, the engineer, our engineers, that came to take a look at uh, Breckenridge. So, Go Ryan and I took him to <laughs> take a look. So, see if there's something within this money we have we can use just to. So, they're working there. Oh, so this is already been borrowed? Yes, this was an article that uh -huh. uh, we have. Yeah, we have 37000 in the project. Yeah, yeah, the trailers are coming out of ARPA funds. And and the 60 is an additional, that's why it's called a balance. So you're saying it's a $100,000 project. Sorry. So we're looking for an additional 60 for that, or not? Looking for 60. Okay. And the trailers? Tr trailers, uh, the, you've been working closely with Carolyn yes. on that, well, and I think she's talked with and, you about uh, He, uh, uh, Gary is getting us, has got, is getting us some quotes, and uh, we had the, the thinking is because our existing trailer, we have a lot of uh, issues. Yeah. Uh, apart from the fact that it has has, has lead is um, so the issue of uh, um, mold and also smell. Scott, can you talk about that smell? Yeah, the the trailers are. Uh, if you're looking at them, the one to the right is pretty musty in there. We're not exactly sure why or what's causing it, but. It's pretty bad, and then the one that's connected to the garage, that's the vehicle maintenance, has a little office in there and a small break room. That's uh, pretty decrepit. Decrepit. It's uh, it's been around a long time and just seen better days. And Linda, that's that's a cash pay down. There's no borrowing involved in that because it's like <coughs> part yeah, of the that, that um. Yeah, I don't think it needs to be approved at town meeting. I think that's what Carolyn was talking about because of the uh, the air if, relation to the air and the cleanliness and the pandemic and all that. It probably fits very well into uh, an ARPA project and it would allow it to get going sooner. I just, can, can you just address what, which, what was raised at select board meeting, which is just give it a good hosing? 
Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. the select board agree that uh, we believe to get a trailer as opposed to um, as opposed to uh, the issue of uh, the study of building and so and I think uh, based some understanding they are in agreement with Caroline to take for us to investigate the issue of the trailer. Yeah. yeah. I think that these trailers last what 25, 30 years they've been there. Yes. And they, were and they were used and we got them from the um, old gym or Russell School. Uh -huh. They had them pre prior to the town of Those are the same trailer. I believe so. I didn't know it was. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, those. Yeah. And so they've lasted 30-ish years. Um, you know, if we can get ARPA to pay for it and buy ourselves 10, 15 years to come up with a feasibility study and finance mm -hmm. the building and mm -hmm. actually do it right versus just we got to do this now because the trailers are falling apart. I think it's true. Yeah. I think it's a good solution, and you don't have to convince me to get new trailers. I I got a tour of that place two years ago, and I would have done it then. <laughs> you should go in there in winter when it's oh, snowing no. the windows. <laughs> uh, no way. I mean, I think if it, anything is a priority, it's that. Yeah. Okay, well this is great. Any other questions or? Yeah, I have a Scott question or? for them. If you have, out of all these things that yes. you just talked to us about, yes. you told me what was, what can you tell me which one is the most important to you? Like Mike and Mike just said, they told us what was the most important to them. Can you tell me what's the most important to about you? Top two. It'll, be, it'll be the two of them. The, I just want you to rate them. The, the, the roller and then the tangler. Those are the most important the things to you. The roller is number one. Yeah. Yeah. And the tangler, yes. Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, but if you give me the third one, uh, yeah. it'll be, it'll be, the, the, it'll be the, the truck that Scott just put in the, the truck. The F550? Yes. Oh, uh, there'll be three. Yes, the, uh, 350 uh, will be good for us. 350? Will be good. Mm -hmm. it'll, be, it'll be the requirement. Okay. That's good. All right. So, yeah, because of, and some of it, we have to think about, um, we, our goal is $350,000, right? Enough. For, le for, for borrowing. Within, for, for within the levy, yeah. right? All right, and so we're having to look to see what's in there because whatever we don't fit in there, the only other option would be is to go to the town for a debt exclusion. So. The, the likelihood of that, yeah. we can all know that that's probably not going to go yeah. well. And I, don't, I don't think anybody here thinks that that's going to pass town, town vote. So, it's understandable. <laughs> so we got to figure out which ones, which, out of that money, what's the most important and how are we going to get it in there. Yeah. So the, the other pickup truck where we did the shuffling through, is that an enterprise purchase? The one that you've ordered, or the no, no it's the one, the one we're proposed the, that we're asking for. Five fifty. No, it, it'd be a three fifty. Oh, we can do that. Three fifty. Yeah, three fifty. Oh, I okay. don't. We can do that. But I, I seven, don't seven, have a three fifty. Yeah. I have a five fifty. Yeah, yeah we we have have that's, that's not accurate. But we can bring in three fifty. So you're looking for a three fifty? Yes. Oh. Did you just order a five fifty? Yes. Oh, okay. I had yeah. a I had yeah. a reverse then. Okay, so yeah. you're looking for a three fifty. Yeah. And is it um, enterprise? I thought you said it was highway. Well, the one is high. All right. I, the one I was already said enterprise. There are supposed to be two on there. One highway, one enterprise. Well, you tell me which is most important. Well, like I said, the, the enterprise one is that change things because it's enterprise and not It does change things. Tax. <laughs> yeah. So that was. So are you saying if you're going, if we're not going to get the highway one at all, could please at least consider doing yeah. the other one, yeah, even if it, yes. even though it's a letter of priority, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But it's not on here. Um, no, we requested for two. We, it's, yeah. It's, it's, and we discussed that with the uh, Caroline. We kicked it to next then, year, yes. thinking that two yes. trucks in one year wasn't going to work. Yes. <laughs> so we okay. kicked it to next. Okay. Okay. But we could swap it back out if it yes. made a difference. Okay. Well, great. Any other? Yeah, because I can see. I would them? say, would which would you rather see? The, the so if we did the seventy-five thousand for the roller and the ninety thousand for the truck, and you skip the big truck, or would you rather do the big truck and skip everything else? 
Uh, where I do the big truck, the roller, and then the truck will be from water, as opposed to jungle. Oh, you want to move the truck over to the water? Yes. Well, okay. Well, then that would so, be out of that. Yeah, you can see. So it sounds like waiting on the gas pumps is that uh, we're good with that. At least, I think, yeah, at least so putting it off to. Yeah, there's a lot that we, yeah, need, so we need more information. We're probably not going to be ready. Well, I don't see it fitting even, and if it's not a priority to them, yeah, and it's not going to fit this year, right? You know, unless we come up with a figure for decommissioning and re reassign it to decommissioning, and in addition to the thirty thousand we already have in there for oh. repairs, so, so it might be a matter of putting it up. I don't know how much it costs. I have no idea. Yeah, but the, but before we recommend to the committee and report to the commission. Probably I, I, I want to talk to the town sure to see how far she has gone with the... Okay. The oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. But for the, in three weeks, can we, if that's feasible, can we get a, an idea of what a decommissioning would cost and whether we need to do it you know, now or can we wait till after Springtown meeting or yeah. can we use the 30,000? The, the 30, 30, yeah, that, that's already have. have. Maybe we can... Yeah. 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 We'll, talk, we'll, talk, we'll talk with the vendor who gave us... Uh, and one or two other vendors and the commission see their take on it and how much it cost us. Mm. Yes. I'm just and a so little the truck, the ninety thousand dollar truck, I just want to get that it's gonna get moved to water. Water, right? yes. What was the one? I was a little worried about the culvert. Um is it a safety? I mean it's a can it wait? I mean I don't like, we need to do some safety work on it. Uh, as opposed to at least just a, it's a temporary one. Weight limit signs or something? It, 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 it has been, yes. the weight limit has been dropped yeah. two and a half, three years ago. We put up signs there, I don't know if the, they're enforcing that or not. Yeah. So the they're, money they're supposed to go. Uh, yeah, I tell you every now and then we are a kaboom. Yeah. yeah, the money we have, <laughs> the, the balance money we have in the article, which is about uh, 37 or something like that, we plan to use that to do some minor repair to uh, keep the place going until... Uh, oh, you'll start using that? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. So that this way, um, if we don't get the 6000 that will give us some, some money to do minor, minor repair while we wait. Uh, also, I'll be talking with the, the town administrator regarding them, see if we can put it back again on the TIP program because it was on the TIP program before and yes. it was taken out. So. Oh, what about Chapter 90? Does it not fit in those? Chapter 90 will not be able to deal with the bridge cover completely based on the money we get. Except the select board wants to put all of that. So. Then we wouldn't be able to pay any roads for the year. Yes. Okay. okay. Right. Any, anybody else? Anything? Mm -hmm. well, thank you very much, Chris and Scott. Thanks for time. Thank you for yeah, having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have a lot to. Uh, think about the next three weeks and we'll get yeah. some more information and we can get back together, reconvene on the 28th. Yeah, and I will spend some more time to like on the... Yeah, uh, Linda, okay. I was going to ask, too, I know, you know, we always got like a five-year in the past, if, if that's coming down the pipe, too, just to, so we can get an idea as a committee what, what's looking coming at what's up? coming down the pipe next year and the year after. Um, I know it was a 10-year for the last yes, few years. Yes, and a lot of, a lot of things have Changed and um, right now, 23. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. 23 has been the parking space for everything that's been moved up in 21 and 22, so mm -hmm. it kind of looks a little bloated right now. So, and we have not had it really gotten back to departments and say what's dropped out at this point. And so, I, 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 we're not, I don't think we're going to have it in the next few weeks, Paul. But I, I think that it's fine. It is definitely something that we should be doing by the end of, of before we get to annual meeting, as, as go back and and check that out. But, Excellent. But I, I'm, I'm glad to hear everyone agrees we're just not going to get a debt exclusion override at this point. I don't think so. One Highly thing I was thinking so. of, Amy, it helps. Highly so unlikely. Much. Yeah, I was, it helped so much, and it was this was Finance Committee idea to increase the um, debt and interest payments by 100000 in a year so that we incorporated it into the capital plan, and we kept, we kept it there, So the, which means over, over five years we're basically getting another half million dollars worth of equipment. I'm wondering if we have a good um, figure uh, with, uh, for a good estimate for free cash, if we might consider doing that again and putting that, increasing the budget to accommodate some more 
and that we could move more over into within the levy, yeah. unless, or unless we don't want to really make that our capital well, plan. Hopefully, I mean, we used a lot of the free cash to balance the budget, which we don't want to ever do, right? I mean, we don't want to normally have to do that. Yeah, we but did, but we do have the revenue replacement, and we really did come out um, well. Do you know how much under, free cash we're going to get? I right? will probably know more in the next two or three weeks. Sure. If we ended up uh, saving quite a bit in the budgets, and we mm -hmm. did end up exceeding our expectations, our lowered expectations in revenues. Yeah. So we ways. are in a, we are in a, a better place than we expected to be, and we have the revenue replacement uh, portion of ARPA, which is going to go and alleviate free cash as well. Um, this is not going to I mean, whatever free cash is. Um, it, there'll, there'll be that can be some one-time uses between ARPA and that, and between and ARPA, definitely yeah. increase the amount within the levy. Right, so we might we'll probably want to do some yeah, one-term. Not going too hog wild either. Depends, yeah, but, you know, it would be maybe pay back we, stabilization too. Or that we, we we pay back stabilization. Mm. We do OPEP, and we do things that are fixes. We don't necessarily go around and increase ten budgets, right. but we do some single things like that. And I thought maybe one of the things, because it does benefit everybody, is that we would want to consider putting another amount in increasing that again. Mm. I don't know. It's something we well, I think just to keep in mind. Yeah. Because that is the place that we can come out of town meeting and say we bought those things tonight. They're, we're not doing anything subject to debt exclusions. Not until maybe in the spring. Yeah. The only time, the next time I can see doing a debt exclusion is when we do the big project for the DPW when you mm -hmm. buy the big, big buildings. That's down yeah. the road. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That I think is probably 10 years down, Way down yeah. the road. Especially yeah. if we're going to spend 100000 on new trailers, it's probably 10 years down the road. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I'm well, saying it's, that's a, a big time. project. That's yeah. millions of dollars. So yeah. There's no way you're going to get around doing that. that that's going to have to be a debt exclusion, I would think. Well, right. we're going to start seeing in 26, 27, we're going to start seeing the debt exclusion payments yep. coming down. So the choice is that point is write them down and try and get them up again with DPW building or you start doing what we did last time is keep it right where it is and fill it in with a, with a building and not have uh, not experience an increase right. um, yeah. so I probably not something we can really discuss through in, 19, no, but we in need 2021 to once but you free this is up, coming up free up some debt, it, debt and it might and it might feel very feasible at that point, but I, I don't know. That's a few. That's a few years away. I don't know how we're going to. We're just getting started on we, this now. We're just getting. We're just really mid recovery. Yeah. And we've got Goodwin, Russell School, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So. Yeah, we need to start making a plan though, right. as as things start to bounce back. All right. For those. Yeah. Okay. Motion, Motion to adjourn. adjourn. That's a lot of stuff. Second. All Second. those in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Meeting is adjourned at 7.13. Thank you. Ugh.